Hello everyone. In today's video, I break down a recent security report on a Mage Card web skimming campaign. I put a link to the report from Akamai Security in the description below. This is a very interesting and novel approach to steal credit card data and therefore I found it worthwhile to make a video about it. Let me know in the comments if these types of videos are interesting to you. We start with the key points. Akamai Security detected a Mage Card web skimming campaign targeting Magento and WooCommerce websites in the food and retail industries. The attackers applied a novel concealment technique, manipulating the default 404 page not found error page to hide malicious code. The reason this is so important is because this way the attackers were able to hide from detection and mitigation techniques since 404 sites are usually not monitored. Affected websites are Magento and WooCommerce sites and this campaign has been active for a couple of weeks or even months. First of all, what is a mage card attack? A mage card attack begins by exploiting vulnerabilities in target websites. For example, if outdated third-party apps or technologies are used. That happens when administrators don't patch the systems. The malicious code is then inserted into either the HTML pages directly or scripts that are loaded. There are three main parts to this attack due to concealment reasons. Loader, the malicious attack code and finally data exfiltration. The loader is a short, obscure JavaScript code which loads the full malicious code from the attacker's server, for example. The malicious code itself is now the primary JavaScript code that executes the attack. It detects sensitive inputs, reads the data, disrupts the checkout and injects forms, uh, but more on that later. Finally, the data is stolen and sent to the attacker server. This server is usually called the command and control or C2 server. There are three variations uh, to this attack and you should really uh, wait for variation three since this is actually the novelty in this attack. In variation one, a male formed HTML image tag is injected into the exploited website. The tag is called on error and it contains a base64 encoded malware loader. The source attribute is left blank intentionally to trigger the error set by the on-error attribute. Many network scanners are not triggered by using image tags and this is therefore a good way to hide malicious code. Once activated, a WebSocket channel to the C2 server is created. First, the C2 server sends a request uh, for the current URL, thereby checking whether we are on a sensitive page, for example a checkout, uh, where the user enters their credit card information or not. If we are on a checkout site, the C2 server sends the malicious JavaScript code, base64 encoded. This code carries out various malicious activities with the goal of obtaining the user's credit card information. Variation 2 is different from variation 1 in its loader component. This time an inline script is inserted instead of an image tag. This looks like a meta pixel code snippet, or formerly known Facebook, uh, and thus doesn't look suspicious. The code fetches a PNG image from the website's own directory. The image, however, is not a normal image. It has been planted there by the attacker and it contains malicious JavaScript within the image binary. This string is decoded and executed by the loader code snippet. The code is identical to the one from the variation 1 and establishes the connection to the C2 server. Now, variation 3, the uniqueness of this attack. In the beginning, it is uh, similar to variation 2. It is often hidden in the meta pixel. But it doesn't load a malicious image, but rather calls the folder slash icons, which doesn't really exist. As you might expect, this leads to a 404 not found error. However, this 404 site has been tampered with. At the end, there is a commented line which, which starts with cookie ANNOT, short for annotation. The call to the slash icons folder also has a regex match for this exact string, which searches for it and decodes the string right next to this annotation. This is now the malicious code, which steals credit card information entered by the users. Data exfiltration happens by providing a fake form in which users enter their credit card information and then a fake timeout occurred, leaving victims to think that the payment was cancelled. To summarize, the attack wouldn't have occurred if there wouldn't have been any web server vulnerabilities to begin with. So attackers had to access the web server in order to inject the malicious codes everywhere or the malicious images and so on. 
or the malicious 404 pages. The variation of hiding malicious code in 404 not found pages is a novel appro approach and therefore of interest for security analysts. Scanners have to increase the scan radius in order to find, for example, loaders embedded in images. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next.